So, as you guys know, Raylo obviously is kind of a thing now. But, there are people who dislike Raylo. And I'm not talking about people like me who don't like the Disney trilogy in general. I'm talking about women who think that Raylo is abusive. I'm no expert on relationships, especially not the deep emotional parts. However, I'm going to listen to what she has to say and hear her out. So, the article is called... Star Wars Shadow Council fan site claims Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker romanticizes abuse and assault against women. I've heard this before, but, you know, I can't remember total details, so let's get into what she has to say. On December 20th, Star Wars Shadow Council published a post by guest contributor Emily, who also goes by the Twitter handle Ray's Speeder, titled Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker glorifies abuse and assault against women, in which Emily argues that the film romanticizes abuse by portraying the myth that fixing an abusive man is ultimate responsibility for a vulnerable young woman. So, you know, some people are just never going to be happy, and I'm unhappy with Disney Trilogy for much different reasons than she is, but thank you, Emily, for this. Let's see what you got. By the way, spoilers coming up. Spoilers, spoilers. They're all online. Everyone should know them by now anyway. Using Bancroft's book, Emily applies the dynamics of abuse discussed by Bancroft to the traditional hero-villain dynamic of Rey and Kylo Ren removing the context of the story and their history to frame Kylo Ren as an abuser. So, this girl, Emily, is going by a book written about abuse between a man and a woman in a similar situation that Kylo and Rey are in, hero-villain. Emily states the movie shows two scenes in particular in The Rise of Skywalker that include classic portrayals of Kylo Ren manipulating, abusing, and assaulting Rey. Well, right off the bat, I'm going to say this. Rey's the one who beats Kylo basically twice. You know, she stabs him in The Rise of Skywalker, she beats him in The Force Awakens, so even if it is an abusive relationship, doesn't seem to matter because, um, Rey's not taking that shit. Obviously, because she's, uh, the bestest ever, as Doomcock puts it. The two scenes include the moment when Kylo Ren steals the, and destroys the necklace Rey received from Aki Aki on Fasana. She says, their interaction ends with Kylo approaching Rey and then assaulting her by tearing off the necklace she is wearing, thereby destroying it. Oh no, a necklace got torn off. Using Bancroft's work, this scene qualifies as depicting physical abuse. According to Bancroft, physical aggression by a man towards his partner's abuse, even if it happens only once. If he raises a fist, punches a hole in the wall, throws things at you, blocks your way, restrains you, grabs you, pushes, pokes you, or threatens to hurt you. That's physical abuse. As well as the scene where Kylo Ren taunts Rey with the truth of her parents and their reasons for abandoning her and Jakku. You may want to prepare yourself if you plan on actually watching it. Daisy Ridley, the actress who plays Rey, emotes in a heart-wrenching manner and portrays her pain and discomfort to a degree that it is hard not to hurt along with her. Rey's repeated cries for Kylo stop and this unwillingness to immediately bring to mind the trauma that so many people, especially women, experience at the hands of men. So basically they also say in the article what I was thinking is that this ignores the context of the story, how, you know, we have the Jedi versus the Sith conflict and everything that is around it. So I'm not totally buying her theories here about what's abuse and what isn't in this movie, but what I'm going to say is there's so many people out there that are crazy about this kind of thing, really overanalyzing things about Rey and Kylo. And it would seem like I'm defending this movie in this way. But, you know, I gotta say, I just find it interesting that people are attacking it from all different angles. And I'm the one, maybe you're the one, getting called toxic and hater. And this lady, who's obviously pointing out things about Raylo and abuse and things like that, is probably just respected, like, oh, sorry you feel that way. Yeah, abuse is a bad thing, and of course abuse is a bad thing. I mean, obviously, everyone in the world thinks abuse is a bad thing, unless you're like that very small percentage of freaks and crazy people. But the point is... You know, she doesn't get called man baby, toxic hater. She just kind of probably gets like the light hand like, well, you know, that's probably not true, Emily. Something like that. That's just my guess. So let's take a look at one of her main statements. In order to inform what is meant by abuse and 
by stating that Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker promotes unhealthy myths about abusive behavior work from a specialist in domestic abuse. Lundy Bancroft's 2002 book, Why Does He Do That Inside the Minds of Anger and Controlling Men, will be utilized as a guide to understand how Kylo is abusive, how Rey is his victim, and how The Rise of Skywalker romanticizes abuse by portraying the myth that fixing an abusive man is the ultimate responsibility for a vulnerable young woman. So, right, right there, what they're saying is it's Rey's responsibility not to save the galaxy, but to save Kylo Ren from his state of mind. It's her responsibility to come in and comfort him, and it's not really fitting for her story of being a hero. I guess they're trying to say it gets in the way of her being a hero and making her way through the galaxy because she's got to fix this broken young man. What the Star Wars Council Twitter account, who originally tweeted this out, says is slightly confusing for me. You guys let me know. They say we find it very telling all of the pushback for hosting this article is from guys. And then they say, meanwhile, we've had several dozen women thank us for it. Hmm. All right, so guys apparently didn't like the article, but women thanked them for the article. I'm a guy, and I didn't like this movie. I don't like the Disney trilogy, but I think it's taking it probably a step too far. That's just my opinion. I also have some certain opinions on Raylo, so to speak. I mean, I guess people who like Raylo and wanted to see it happen, think it's like this thing, but, you know, it seems like they just kind of shared this kiss, like, kind of because, like, there was, like, nothing better to do for them, you know, like, it was, like, just this intimate moment, almost impulsive. I'm not sure they would have actually gotten together, and I also think, here we go, JJ threw it in to pander to Raylo's, who he obviously noticed around the internet for the last two, three, four years, even maybe even before The Force Awakens came out, who knows, maybe a couple of people started fantasizing, things like that, so I don't think it's real, I don't think it's intended, I just think it was part of The Rise of Skywalker that got a little pandering in there. Anyway, I'm doing shoutouts, special thanks, things like that, at the end of this video, I will do a shoutout now. Shoutout to Adega Outlaw, and John Bamford, and Kevin. Six, they are all giving me some great comments, and I apologize because I can't totally get to those comments 100%. I'm overwhelmed, but I appreciate it, and I'm seeing them and hearting them, and that's it. If you're new here, check out that video. I'll link in the back. It's maybe better than this one, maybe worse, and I mess up and the videos, but that's okay because that's okay because I'm just I'm just chilling. I'm just trying to be cool. See you next time. If you are not subscribed to this channel, The Entertainment Hacker, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button now.